I'm going to be building a fishing rod from scratch. It's a nice little custom blank and I've also got a range of handle parts all customised for this rod. Couple of mil short of it. Can make or, or break the rod if it's not done pro properly. Today is finally the day where we actually get to pick up the completed rod. Approved. Oh sh**, he just got larger. Yep. Yes! On my own custom built rod. Absolutely stoked. That's a good fish. Really good fish. Oh, he's gonna get home, he's gonna get home. G'day everyone, welcome back. We are gonna be doing a bit of rod building today. We're gonna to be building a fishing rod from scratch. I'm gonna be building a BFS rod. Now, if you don't know what BFS is, BFS basically stands for bait cast or bait finesse system. And it's pretty much, you can chuck ultra light lures, top waters, hard bodies, unweighted soft plastics, on bait cast gear. The whole purpose of BFS mainly comes down to the actual reel itself, the capabilities of casting so light, but you also do need a BFS rod to pair with it. I have the reel, don't have a rod, and that is what we're gonna be doing today. Now I could go online, buy some parts, and put this together at home, but I've decided to make this a pretty special one with also a pretty special person in the rod building industry, especially here in Australia. And this rod is gonna turn out probably 20 times better than it would if I was to go online, do a bit of YouTubing and doing it myself. The person who is actually gonna help me with this, and I've worn the shirt just for the occasion, is Ian Miller. So he's actually gonna be helping me from start to finish. For the people that don't know Ian, he's the owner, operator, and complete maker of the Miller Rods brand. He's an ex-tournament angler, and actually in this warehouse is his boat, and it is so sick. Probably gonna show that in a little bit of time, but favorite fish that I know of at the moment being cod, bass, Barramundi, his nickname is Barra, Ian Barra Miller. Enjoys offshore fishing for those game fish and just an all-round fish head in general. He's been fishing his whole life, started off making rods at a young age, moved into custom rods, then moved into the production range. Oh, and by the way, if you're wondering where I am, I'm actually at the warehouse already. This is just one of the spare rooms, so without further ado, I reckon we go inside, greet Ian, and get into the build. Big 150 on the back. Three box of goodies. So what we've got here is the makings for your BFS rod that you want to you want to get. Um, I've got the blank ready for you. It's a nice little custom blank ready to go. And I've also got a range of handle parts all customized for this rod. And they're mostly ready to go. You'll have to do a little bit of uh, fitting to get these exactly yeah. into place and then we'll glue them on. So we're gonna get this handle to fit right at the bottom of the rod. At the moment, it doesn't go far enough down. So we're just going to adjust the inside diameter so it sits perfectly in place before we glue it. It only needs a couple of millimetres taken out of the inside diameter. For that we use a rat tail file just to ring them the inside out. You can do it by machine but we'll do it by hand, it's a little bit more accurate. Now the important, the most important aspects of doing this is one, don't make it too big. Two, it's got to be uh, a consistent inside diameter, like not too big at the, at the front. It's more at the back, so you need to be careful of that. And the hole needs to be perfectly centered in the part. Otherwise, if it's offset, then your other parts might not fit. No pressure. Okay, you just want to keep that even pressure on the core so it doesn't get filed out in an uneven fashion and offset up and to keep it off. It's perfectly centered and nice and consistent through the length of the core. We might just have to run this to exhaust the cork, so it's going to make a bit of noise. Step one done, shaved out the cork bottom. Now slide this down and see what our fit is like for the inside diameter of that. Unlikely you're going to get the first perfect fit, so we're, not, we're going to have to make it perfect fit. So that's going to need some, a little bit of easing out with one of these files as well. If you have a look inside the reel seat, see how it's only got the back half of it that you need to file. Yeah. Bit more. 
close, and you check. Nailed it. Perfect. That's a rock. So now we're, we're ready to mix some glue. So we'll just warm it up because it's a cool day and it mixes better and you'll get a better set with the glue if it's warm. And then we'll glue these parts on. Super strength glue equal parts of resin and hardener. So you need to mix it really thoroughly, let it sit for 10 minutes and then mix it again. So like this? Yeah, get into it. Just try and keep it neat, but you, you need to mix it properly and thoroughly. You know it's mixed because the colour will go light like that and it'll be consistently light right through the whole lot of it. Real seat parts, blank parts. These parts go on the grip itself. So everything's laid out. Of course. <laughs> so everything's laid out and it's all it's all ready to go. It's when you just walk out the door, <laughs> call it a day. Use your knife just to spread glue on this section of the blank. Just a little bit ahead of that white mark there. The whole blank needs to be wet down so you've got maximum con glue contact between the blank and this part. Just don't get glue on your hands. That's it. Oh, so just close. slowly put it on with it like a twisting motion. So you can get like a good coating of glue inside that grip and around, right around the blank. You see that's, no, that's, that's good coverage. It's just a, a little bit of gap in the cork and it's pushing out which is good. The parts are oozing glue that means you've got plenty in there between the, the join. So all of these parts have got to be fitted on now. The good news is that they're it's just an assembly job everything's going to fit properly we won't need to adjust much at all. Those two parts have to go on on the back there this part's got to go on the front. Tom's just ruined the shot so that ring sits between the grip and the real seat just to make a nice little neat feature the transition between those two parts, put that part in. I didn't put a lot there because if I put a lot there it would have oozed out and gone all over the cork. Yeah. You don't need to do that. That's never going to move or fall out the cart because this part's going to be behind it. So your real seat's going to be slid on in the same fashion, just a little bit of twisting. What you want to be aware of is this line here on the blank. Mark that. that is, that's the backbone of the blank. You want that on top. You want to make sure the glue gets in everywhere. Just don't, don't push it down into the wheels. If anything, just hold it up. Just push it straight down now. You've got plenty of glue. That's it. Done. We'll just check that straight. Yep, that's good. Now you're just going to need to clean up in the trigger here where you've got the exposed blank. Get in there and wipe it off. Throw that one away. Like you want to get them really wet, throw it away and grab another one. So your next step is gluing these two trim parts in place. One that will sit in front of the real seat and one that will sit on top of that and in front of the real seat to, to seal it off. Just let it push all the glue ahead of it. Push it down all the way to the seat. On top of the seat. I wanted a lot of glue on it. So now, yep. Make sure you, you're nicely cleaned up. I'm gonna glue my little fish fin in with this. Fish fin? Yeah. Spin the camera around for that one. <laughs> Sailfish or swordfish, what is that? It's a short billed spearfish. Is that all looking alright? It's all looking, straight. It's looking good. Beautiful colour combo. It's straight, so we can just um, let it cure overnight and then continue working on it. So we'll just stand that upright so the glue doesn't move around and we'll just let that cure. Day one wrap. Alright, it's been a few days' time since we've glued up all the back ends. I'll probably get Ian to explain a bit more on the parts because I'm not exactly sure what they all are. And um, today is putting on thread. Thread work, getting the guides all put on. I've gone with a full high-end guide train. Fuji titaniums for the whole set. So it's not going to rust out in the salt and last a long time. But it's looking pretty bloody schmick. Really happy with it so far. So the handle for Josh's rods all complete now. It's a beautiful little single-handed casting style. It's very lightweight uh, but it's also very functional and it's dressed up with some pretty fancy metal trims just to make it look look the part. This is in my opinion the most comfortable casting handle you can do with that particular reel seat and that type of grip. And then you're just going to be mark, quickly marking it out down there like that and then you're done. I'm going to stop this. It's going to take me 10 years. I think that's it.
Uh, you followed me later if you were this one. That's not good. Why would you usually thin them down? So when you when you're binding up up the guide foot, so you've got the blank, and you've got the guide foot there. You don't want it to, the guide foot to be like that because you can't bind up it. You want it to be like a really easy transition going upwards. Going up, otherwise you get a gap in your binding. Now you need to cut yourself some skinny masking tape so you can get the guides on. I literally can't get it straight, Ian. Can't get the tape to stick, can't know where the straightness is. It's taken me this long to realise why people pay you to do it. <laughs> okay, that took me five minutes or so. Oh mate, this is, this is next level hectic. Sometimes you just gotta let the experts who know what they're doing take over. If you would have known I didn't know how to put masking tape around a guide on a blank. It just smashed out four in the same time that it took me to not even do one. I didn't even. Actually, I think it was less time that it took you not to do one. Put the thread over the blank, back around, and alongside where you started, and you go over that one that's underneath. And that you just need to hold the tension for a moment with your finger, and you just bind inside of those three. But you can get neatness happening later, but the important thing is that you learn how to start it. Because on your rod, you're going to scale down the diameter and the thread size, so it's going to be a little trickier. Barra School of Rod Binding. But it's been a while since you've taught anyone how to do this. Yeah, it's been a few years now. You're literally going to be starting a binding and then going up the guide, and it's really hard to correct bad errors once you're doing that. Oh, Ian, what? we're getting somewhere. Except I've tied this in with a lot of thread, so... If you can tie flies, you can bind a rod. Well, I've just got some little practice equipment set up. Got a set of binding wheels that are mobile, take them anywhere. A couple of different uh, spools of thread and thicknesses of thread. And just a matter of repetition now till you get it right. All right, we're up to session three of this build. And today's gonna be putting the guides on actually binding it all together. As you would have seen, I've got that little bit of a practice kit from Ian and was practicing over the weekend. It's now Monday and we're gonna be putting it together. I'll we'll try my best to. So there's a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 guides to put on, if that's counting the end. Um, there's currently no end on it. I don't really know how to do the end part, but we're gonna be binding all black thread onto these guides and also gonna be adding a bit of silver trimming on a few of them. Just go, give it, like just actually just try. No, I'm not saying to the camera, just say, just. Give me your best intro, go. Fishing with Josh. It's fishing with Josh. Out on the water. Salutations, gentlemen. Today marks a special day in the era of sport fishing in this great southern land. Our intrepid young filmmaker has embarked on his greatest journey so far. Which is? The manufacturer of a fishing rod for finesse bait cast system fishing. <laughs> You'll hate buying those little fifty guys too. Oh, this one here's already getting a bit tricky. Yeah, real quick, What do you want for lunch? Oh, I'm pretty hungry. Okay, I'll go get it. A couple of large pizzas from Tony's and some gelato to wash it down with. <laughs> There's that bit done. Oh, yeah, dude. You might say, did you do that, Josh? And then I'll say, no.
Okay, so now this is where you need to pick up the silver thread, bind them both like this with the silver to the right, the black bit to the left. That silver wants to show on me. See where we're going with this? Yeah. Yeah, right. So I'd, I'd probably put it through there now and pull it through. There you go. Okay, you can trim away and that's what we're looking for. Okay. For the epoxying process, we use a two part epoxy. Uh, we've got various brands and types, or they have different properties, and we use them on different rods depending on what we we want in the, in the property of the epoxy, whether we want it thin, thick, super clear, uh, that sort of thing. So you're going to be using quite a thin, very clear epoxy. It'll be hand mixed and then applied with a small stiff bristle brush. You might get some other um, advice on using soft bristle brushes, but they just don't do a, a good enough job with epoxy, which tends to have a bit of body about it. It's not thin at all. So in a nutshell, that's what you're about to do. The basic method with using your the brush is that you hold the brush still and you rotate the rod. Then you can use, use brush strokes to even things out but your application is usually done by holding the brush still and rotating the rod. That, once again you're minimizing the amount of bubbles that you're going to put into the, into the epoxy on the rod. You could actually do this in one coat but you just you're never going to get as good a result. The end result of a really um, low build level epoxy can make or, or break the rod if it's not done pro properly. The best way to do it is with multi-coating. Get your brush in there and wet your brush up. Completely? Just get the bristles saturated. Otherwise you're going to have the shitty looking like dimply thin paste on there. If you get a good amount on and spread it lengthwise you're going to get it, it'll level up nicely for you. By spinning the blade. Yeah that's a, that's a full half inch error. Right? This is the least important coat. Do you reckon coat it though again anyway? No. That's it. That's it. So tomorrow you can do decals and a second coat. And you need to put the tip top on there as well. So your binding hasn't finished yet. See how you've got little spiky bits there on your binding? Mm. You just slice them off. Like that. So your next coat will go over that and it will be totally smooth. Stationary. Roll the blank under it backwards. Just put your finger down, just roll it like that. Pretty firm. You press pretty hard with that. Just work your way along doing that. Okay. Is that it? That's it. So now we will do something out here, but I don't want you to film it. Lather it on there, right? 
I haven't filmed the past probably three or four times that I've been working on the rod because we had some issues with the decal. It's a bit of an Ian's secret little way of putting the decal on and I just kept doing it way too hard and pushing all the stickiness from underneath the sticker out and pretty much when you put the epoxy over the top you can easily see it. So did that once, removed it, did it again and I put it on the little secret way on too hard again. And instead of taking off the decal, we tried to slice around the edges to do the best job possible at a really nice clean finish underneath. So I put the final coat on yesterday, and today is the day where we get to go in and pick it up. So let's get out of this car, and let's do so. Keen is an understatement for how excited I am, so let's get in there. Just me. Hello, me. Hello, me. Well, the other thing you can do is you can tidy this up a little bit just by running sandpaper over it and it'll make it look like a showroom quality. Uh, I better put the price in there. Eh? Thousand, hundred thousand, twenty thousand, thirty thousand. Approved. Thank you. No worries. Joshy D BFS. So this rod was probably about three to four months in development. Probably took me a good two months to put fully together. Just for the amount of time that um, I had to take out of Ian's day to help me put parts together and show me what to do and sizings, thread work, epoxy, gluing, all that takes time and effort and um, Ian's a very busy man so before this video even starts actually big thanks to him for allowing me to actually do this. But here we are. This rod I've actually he's put the specs on the back. Lucky does all these rods. It's six foot, one piece, three to eight gram. So ultra, ultra light. What we're gonna be doing first thing is seeing if I can cast around this 2.2 inch plastic on a 128th jig head, just to actually push this thing to its limits. BFS is pretty much ultra light bait cast fishing. So if you can imagine a bait caster, you're pretty limited to how light you can cast on it. But with this thing, you can cast extremely, extremely light. Now that's mainly due to the reel but you do need a nice, flexible, and pretty tippy rod to go with it. So that was the whole point in building this. The rest of the specs are, it's one to three kilos. So yeah, beautiful little stick. That's the colorway we chose to go with. I think it turned out heaps good. Let's hit some snags. All right, here we go. Tiny little plastic. I actually have never casted this light with this reel, so this will be quite interesting to see. I don't even know if it can cast. Well, it's supposed to be able to cast this sort of light stuff. 128th hidden weight jig head's pretty hectic. I probably should be doing a bit of top water. It's prime time for it right now. So flexible. Nice and tippy. No way. Five minutes in, if that. Are you serious? Oh. Oh. He's actually decent, I think. Oh, sh**. He just got larger. Just grew in size. Oh, he's just popped off. That was a pretty big brim. It felt small at the start, but it just kept growing. Look at that lure. 
Damn it. Just a really tiny 8.5 air TW gear ratio reel. And I've got that with a five pound braid, six pound leader. Oh, dude, this hook up rate is not going too well at the moment. Mate, can I stick a ah! hook, please? Yep. The smallest fish we've hooked up to, but we've pinned the hooks in it. That is the very first fish on my own custom built rod. The Joshy D BFS. He's pinned that little crawfish pattern right the side of its face. Be lucky to be 25 centimeters. Sweet. First is a first though. You know, this is probably one of the cooler looking plastics I've ever used. I reckon it will get bit, but our hookup rate is probably going to be absolutely terrible. Let's see. Yep, that's a decent fish. Oh. oh, perch. Good perch. Come on. Yes. Oh, mate. We are getting to make work for it, I tell you. If that even made sense. How cool is that thing, man? Good solid 40 odd centimetre perch on my own custom built rod. That's so cool. There's that sand eel. Four inch lure. Perfect gar imitation. We got a few hits off smaller fish. It was only a matter of time before we come across something half decent. And there it is. You're free perchy. And he's off. First fish, or second fish, sorry. First proper fish on the BFS. That's the little lure we're gonna go with. A Little bit of a long time favorite of mine. Most definitely will hook up. Oh my, this is so good for working hard bodies. You can fully feel every tiny vibration. Huge brims, absolutely huge. Check out that guy. That was a tough extraction, but we got him out. Almost got me on the snags. It was close. Slightly bigger than the last one. Switched over to a hard body and we're now keeping the hooks in them. I'm 
think. Oh. I was like, there's no way I've just hooked a good one. As soon as I open my mouth, it's always good to see small fish of any sort for the future of the system. Put the perch to the test on this rod. Then we just need a big old mid 30s brim. Creeping up into some skinny country here. That's a better brim. Okay, we found a slightly better model. Oh, mate, that took some time. I'm just gonna boat flip him. Yeah, that's not too bad. I'll take that. There we go, half decent brim. Finally, took so long, but we got there. We'll fish the way back to the car. I'd like to do a bit more, but I just don't have the GoPros for it. I've literally gone through six batteries. Thanks, Brim. Yep. There's an alright Brim. Boat flipping on BFS combo. We're ticking off a few fish, they're just not super quality. Usually that's the common case with winter. Well, they say they're not as quality. I've caught some, some of my best brim in winter. Oh. There we go. That's a good fish. Really good fish. Oh, he's gonna get home, he's gonna get home. No, no, no. Oh, we're rubbing. Go up. Stay up. Stay up. This kayak's gonna me. Oh, stay on man, stay on please, I think this might have been the fish from earlier, we've got like 5% left on the GoPro, oh and he's only on by one treble, come here, oh, yes. that's how you finish it. That is how you finish it. We had to work for a solid one today. We truly did, but we've done it. Got me in all sorts, trying to battle the wind. That's just a quality, quality winter brim. I can see my lead up. Yeah, it's all dusted. I don't know how I got that out. He's no giant, but that is how you finish a day on the water. Beautiful, I'd guess mid thirties, yellowfin brim. All up in the sticks. My leader is completely destroyed. If this wasn't the last fish of the day, we'd definitely be doing a retie. But um, yeah, we're gonna get him back in the water very, very shortly, and that'll be it. So, first impressions on the new rod. Um, you can definitely tell as well that it's uh, my work. I'll be able to get better close-ups on some of them guides, but the epoxy work is very, very dodgy. Nonetheless, epoxy work may be dodgy, but it still holds up, it still fishes, and yeah, well, still catches, so. Very enjoyable, we'll be using it a lot, lot more, so get keen for more videos in the future on it. The Joshy D BFS. It's getting back in the drink, eh? Any final words, Brim? Gotcha. Now it does look like a face. Now it's a face. There we go. Uh, the guy trained that I've organised for Josh's rod, uh, why do you want to film this bit though? It's a crucial part. 
Now just see, see how straight it is. Just tell me anything. It should beep when it goes straight. That. <laughs> it doesn't even have anything on it. <laughs> oh, you're kidding. Put that bit into the fixed hood. That's the bit that doesn't move. That's the sliding hood. And then you can pick it up and use this to help your gunshot your guides down. Possibly, there is quite a possibility that was the fish from earlier.